Welcome to the Service Studio Overview section. In this section, we'd like to discuss a number of topics, including describing what Service Studio is and all the different parts of the Service Studio layout. So Service Studio, as we'll see in a second, is our development environment, and it has a number of different areas and tabs that give us different types of functionality, uh, a lot of information in the menus, and there are editor areas that give us a lot of different types of things to work with as well. So a lot of uh, information to cover, so let's go ahead and get started. So when we think about Service Studio and the OutSystem server, we know that Service Studio is our primary development environment and we connect to the OutSystem server to go ahead and push the description of our applications to that server. So it is a low-code visual development environment that it works with the OutSystem server. So Service Studio allows us to define different types of data structures, it allows us to define our user interfaces for web and mobile apps, and that includes being able to style them and make them look really nice. Um, different types of business logic is, is created, and if we want, we can go as far as creating processes as well. But in general, Service Studio lets us do typical development things. We will be creating, editing, updating, and then publishing the types of resources that you would expect um, to be able to create the apps that we need and debug the apps. So Service Studio is, is relatively easy to work with. It's also very easy to install. Once you download the Service Studio package, it's basically a one-click install. And then once we've installed Service Studio and we open it, when we open it, it needs to connect to an OutSystem server. So we would go ahead and choose an OutSystem server either on-premise or in the cloud. We'd give it a user ID and a password, and then we'd be able to connect to that server. So Service Studio as an integrated development environment is a client to the server that we're going to be working with. Now, once we connect to the server, the server will place us, the Service Studio and client environment will show us the server environment, and the environment tab shows us the applications that are in the server. So we are able to see different types of web apps, as we can see here, different types of mobile apps, so the small icons tell us what those are, and then we can go ahead and create new applications anytime we need, or we can install existing applications, either from a description or a file that we might have, or from uh, the Forge, which is our community area. Now, once we select one of the applications, we will go to the Application Detail tab, and the Application Detail tab shows us the information about the application itself. It also shows us the modules that are inside of that application. So our applications are made up of one or more modules. We'll see the names of the modules here. We'll also see any dependencies. If there's something in this module that requires other modules, so this one depends on others, it will show us the list of dependencies that exist. Um, you can also see that there's a native platform tab. If we're building mobile applications, we can go to the native platform tab and generate the iOS or Android packages to go ahead and be able to have a package to install directly on our phone. So the Applications Detail tab gives us a, a lot of information. When we finally open our application, the application opens in an application tab. So both our environment tab and our application tab are sort of in the tab area at the top. And we can open multiple applications at the same time and just move between them by moving in between the tabs. So when we're in the module workspace tab, we have uh, the typical integrated development environment layout that you might expect. Now there's one tab that we didn't discuss, and that's the OutSystems tab at the beginning. And if you click on the OutSystems tab at the front, then it will actually take you to the Forge. And the Forge has lots of different types of applications or resources available. Some of them are mobile, some of them are web, but there are hundreds of things that are available. Um, you can download them. They are rated by the different people that have downloaded them, and you can tell which types of components are featured and or supported. So these are all open source 
community-based resources and they are free to download so it's a nice place to go ahead and look for information but it has its own tab so that you can find and work with it very easily and very quickly. Underneath that there is a menu bar that has some tools, some menus, uh, what we call layers on the right hand side so we'll talk about those a lot more. On the right hand side there's a tree that allows us to get to the different elements that are available inside of the development environment. There's an editing area where we'll do all of our work. There are some properties for the different resources that are available. And there's sort of a debug area that uh, gives us more information about the types of things that are going on. And at the very bottom, there's a status bar. Uh, and that status bar tells us who we're logged in as, what server we're currently connected to, and uh, when our last changes were made. So a lot of information that is available, a number of different areas inside of our Service Studio layout, uh, but not all that different than other types of development environments that you may be familiar with. So if we look quickly at the menu bar to see some of the things that are available from that perspective, if we start on the right hand side, um, you can see that there's different types of layers, there's different types of pieces. So there are menus to begin with, there are the toolbar icons that are available, um, and these let us either go back and forth or manage different resources that we might need. There's a one-click publish button in the middle, and then there are the layer icons that show us if we're working in the processes, the user interfaces, the logic, or the data areas. And to the far right, there is a search capability. So the menu bar gets us to most of the things that we're typically uh, going to need. So if we start on the far right, we will see that we can search. And if we type in something to search for, it will bring back different types of things that match the search, um, whether they're in different areas, whether they're in the data area, the logic area, or the interface area, it will bring back all of them. And we can narrow our search. We can search just within the area we're working. We can search within the module or our whole community, including the forge and any of the other types of resources. If you double click on any of the results, it will jump to those and open them so you can see what you were searching for. So the search can be a very handy thing. From there we get to the layers and if we start at sort of the lowest layer the data layer will show us the different types of database entities or local storage entities that might be available and other types of data structures or properties that are available on our server. So the data layer is, is one layer that uh, we would worry about up from the data layer we'd want to be able to work with logic and logic will include client actions that run on the device, server actions that run on the server, different types of integrations including SOAP and RESTful services or connections to enterprise systems like SAP and other types of things. And the logic also keeps control of the security roles so that we know who can get to what and along with the logic there are exceptions in case there are problems inside of the flow of the logic. The next tab that we get to is the interface tab and this is for the user interfaces. So the user interfaces are grouped into flows and those flows have different screens available inside of them. Um, because interfaces will need different types of images and graphics that's there and then in general our applications will need some sort of look and feel and we refer to those as themes and then if we need any types of scripts JavaScript or other types of things to support the applications and the interfaces that we're creating those will be available in the script area and last but not in the least there is the processes area and inside the processes area there are processes um, which are basically business processes, um, any type of process really. There are the capabilities for human and automated tasks and decisions and other things. And then there are also timers where we can basically schedule an action or a piece of logic to run and we can tell it when it needs to run. So uh, processes can be quite nice. Now we also have in the middle the one click publish button. When we're finished developing whatever we might need, um, <clears throat> we can go ahead and click the one-click publish button 
down near the debug area we'll get some feedback on whether that publish occurred successfully and if it does then the button will turn from green and the publishing button to what we call the open in browser button it will turn blue and then we can immediately test our mobile or web app um, if it's a mobile app it will be in an emulator inside of Chrome otherwise we can test it in any kind of browser if it's just a web application now if we move across the menu to the left hand side we get to the toolbar and here we have the arrows of the toolbar and these are fairly typical you've probably seen them before these are our undo and redo buttons so they're available and they do sort of what you would expect we also have this up and down arrow and that is our compare and merge if we've been working on a particular version and we want to see how it compares to some other version we can go ahead and select the two versions and see the differences and it will highlight the differences in blue and it would tell us when those things have been modified so we do have a capability of versioning and when those versions are there we can compare them as needed now earlier we mentioned that our application may actually reuse resources from other modules or other applications and we refer to those as dependencies. So inside of our particular module, we may have dependencies on something like the mobile charts. And if those dependencies are available, here we're looking at the different things that are available from the systems, then we could go ahead and use any of those resources. You can see exactly which pieces of the system entities, uh, and the system in this case actions, are available. Um, and there's this interesting new refresh all button that helps us uh, kind of update our references and dependencies a little bit quicker. We also have a module management um, tool that will open up <clears throat> the service center and we can continue to use service center inside of service studio or we can actually just open it in the browser. Uh, but when Service Center opens inside of Service Studio, it will open to the module that you're currently working on, and it can show you the versions of the module that are available, who was the last person to publish and update those, and if you needed to kind of get a version of those, you could easily download them. Um, so that takes care of some of the, the tools in the toolbar. Um, I think I forgot one from you there. Yeah, there we go. So there are the back and forth buttons. Um, these actually just move you back and forth in between the editors that you're working on. We have the undo and redo. We also have the back and forth in between the editors. So um, those can be really nice if you just want to quickly move to an editor and be able to do some things and then jump back. So uh, very convenient capabilities. Now those were the tools in the toolbar. Above the toolbar are the menus. And the menus have a lot of the exact same things that we've seen inside of the other parts of the menu bar up until this point. But there are some things that you can do from the menu that you can't do other places. And one of them is looking at all of the versions that are available while you're in Service Studio. Um, so we could get to this type of information from the service center um, but here we can just open it immediately and see when things were published and who was the last person to go ahead and work on those. We also can switch environments if we have Service Studio open we're connected to one particular environment and server we may wish to connect to a different environment to compare things or to look at so we can have two Service Studios open at the same time or we can take this particular Service Studio and switch over to another environment we just need the right user ID and password to connect to those and then one other thing that we do from the module menu is to clone things and cloning basically duplicates and creates a copy of those modules uh, and their resources and a lot of times we use this to do refactoring or to split up some of the code that is there. So those are some of the, the basics. We do have the debugger menu that shows us all of the debugging controls and the debugging controls are available in the debug tab at the bottom as well and you can do the typical debugging things. Once we start the debugger you can do the classic step over, step into, um, we could break on all of the exceptions, stop the debugger, so um, 
lot of good debugging capabilities and we can get to those through the menu or the tab. Typically we work with the tab instead. We also have what you would expect as far as the editing capabilities in the edit menu, the view capabilities in the view menu, and then help shows us some basic help. Um, probably the best thing to do here, the most useful things are to ask the community and be able to ask and search across out systems. And if you have any feedback for us, you can submit that here as well. Um, inside of the view, it does show the shortcuts. So if you want to jump from one tab to the other instead of trying to use the menu, you can learn the shortcuts and you can jump into the widget tree or one of the layers or synchronize the tree to the layers. So a lot of nice shortcuts that uh, can be very useful. Now when we think about the integrated development environment, most of the time we're going to be doing work and that means we'll be working in an editing area. Um, so typically we come to the tree area, we'll select some sort of resource, in this case the home screen, and if we double click on it, it opens inside of the editing area. And at the same time, it populates the properties area with all of the properties of that particular element. Um, so the editing area has a lot of different pieces to it as well. We refer to this gray area in the center as the canvas. To the left hand side we have the toolbox which has all of the widgets inside of it. And then we have the preview area and we can see do we want to preview this as a phone or as a tablet app. Um, so we could have a number of different previews. We could also see that for these items are there styles, any kind of cascading styles available um, or associated with that particular resource. And if we're working on a particular resource, any special features will come up just to the right of the styles and just to the left of the description or the breadcrumbs of where we are. So here we're working on the to-do screen, which is part of the main flow. And because this happens to be a list item inside of a mobile app, we can swipe. And because that swipe is available, it shows up as a special feature that we can get to. Uh, we also have a little icon that can show us the detailed structure of this screen and we'll look at that in a second, but we can also see the detailed structure down at the bottom. So the widget tree will show us that, but this widget hierarchy can show us that as well. And here we can see that we're looking at a list item inside of a list. Inside of that list item there's a block and overall this is all inside of a mobile layout. So. Um, the editing area gives us a, a lot of uh, capabilities and things to be able to work very quickly. Here is the widget tree that I mentioned earlier, so you can see that there's the similar type of structure, and if we follow it down we can get to the list and the list item and be able to see the block, and here we have the list and the list item and the block. Um, so similar information in different areas just to try to make things as quick and easy as possible and when you need more information and content you can get to that through the widget tree. Um, now one of the last things that we haven't mentioned is down near the debug area there is this true change capability and true change is going to be out systems capability to tell us whether or not everything inside of our environment is consistent. So if there are any things that uh, we need to be warned about, we'll get yellow warnings. And if we've created something that is actually an error, we'll get a red X and we'll be able to see the errors. So true change will constantly be evaluating the edits that we make and the changes that occur. And if anything is inconsistent, it will tell us about it. And if we double click on any of these, it will take us directly to the piece that we need to look at to either think about that warning or try to solve that error. So while we're working in the editor areas, there are many different types of editors. We were just looking at the screen editor, but we may have flows inside of the screens to do actions. We have style sheet editors, we have entity editors and entity diagrams, we have expressions and JavaScript editors. So there are many, many different types of editors and we were only sort of looking at one, but that editing area behaves in a very similar way. Um, it just changes what types of edits we can make. So, in this session, we tried to describe what Service Studio is, which is our integrated development environment that connects to an OutSystem server so that we can go ahead and begin working and publishing our applications as we need to. 
there are a lot of different capabilities and we showed that um, across the menu area you can get to some of the different things that you will need to be able to work with um, and a lot of that stuff um, will get you to the point where you'll be ready to edit something in the editing area. So hopefully this gives you some of the terms and the overall layout of Service Studio so that as we uh, work with it more, you'll be more familiar with the areas and the, the things that we can do.